Hey guys, connecting N810 to Go High Level sounds simple, right? But it's not. I've seen so many people waste hours trying to figure out which connection method to use. Some go down the OOT rabbit hole and give up, others use private integration and then realize they can scale to multiple clients. Here's the truth. There are two ways to connect N810 to Go High Level, and most people pick the wrong one for their use case. In this video, I'm going to show you both connection methods and when to use each one. And we'll build the same automation, creating a simple contact using both approaches. So you can see exactly what the trade-offs are. By the end, you'll know exactly which method is right for your workflow. I'm Alexander Spalato, N8 and ambassador and automation expert. I help agencies build systems that save them 20 hours a week. If you need help implementing this for your business, I offer free strategy course, link in the description. Before we get into the how, let's talk about the why. If you're running a marketing agency, you're probably drowning in manual work. Client onboarding can take 20 hours, reporting 30 hours, and every time you want to sync data between your automation platform and your CRM, someone has to do it manually. This is where NA10 and Go High Level comes in. The first method is called private integration, and this is the fastest way to get up and running. This is how it works. Go to your iLevel account and click settings in the bottom left, then go to private integrations and create a new integration. Give it a name, so for example, NA10 connection. Now, here's the important part, scopes. Scope are permissions, they tell Go High Level exactly what this API key is allowed to do. For this demo, we're creating a contact, so I need view contact and edit contact. That's it, don't add scope, you don't need this, keep your integration secure, and click create. And now you have your API key, you copy it, and you won't see it again. Now, in NA10, add a HTTP node and go to the high level documentation, which is here, marketplace go high level docs to the API documentation. And here we go to CRM and contacts and we want to upsert a contact. It means that we can create a contact or update it if it exists already. So here we have a curl and we are going to copy it and return back to GoI level and import it. Here we are going to create a credential. So for authentication, we choose generic credential type and we choose bearer auth and we create a new credential. And here we paste our token and we name it GHL private integration and we save. So now we don't need any more this. Then in the body, we have all this data that is a demo uh, contact, but with a lot of, lot of fields, okay? But for the demo, we are going just to create uh, the name and the email. But first, let's go back to the documentation to see what are the necessary fields. So here I see that in the header parameter, we have a version uh, parameter that is required and it's equal to this. So we copy this, we go back to NA10 and we send the headers. And so here the name of the parameter is version and we paste this. Then go back to the documentation. In the body, we have another required field, which is the location ID. Okay, and this is an example, so we have to find our ID. So for that, we go to high level and we go to our integration. So we go to settings again, and here we copy the location ID. We go back to NA10, and in the body, we change this to using fields below, and we had location ID and we copy this here. Now we are going to just send the name and the email to test our installation. And we execute to see if everything works. Okay, everything works. We're going to check that 
in our account. So we go to contacts and we can see that our contact has been created. That's it. Five minutes and you're connected. These are the pros and cons of the private integration. First setup, no OAuth redirect URL, no marketplace app required and works immediately. The cons, you have to manually build every API request. So for just the email, it's okay, but as soon as you have custom fields, etc., it becomes more complicated. You need to read the API documentation for every action. There is no autocomplete for fields and there is more room for error, typos, wrong endpoints, etc. And it only works for one Go high level account. The last one is critical. If you're an agency with multiple clients, you need to create a separate private integration token for each client account. That's a maintenance nightmare. So when to use a private integration? You're only automating your own Go high level account. You need something working in five minutes. You're comfortable reading uh, API docs and you only need a few specific actions. Now let's dive into the second method, the OAuth and the native Go high level node with NA10. So this is more set up upfront, but you can connect multiple clients account with one app. So if you're an agency, this is the only way to scale. So first you need to go to marketplacegohighlevel.com. So you need to, if we go to the documentation, to create a high level developer account. So if I click here, it goes to marketplacegohighlevel.com. I have already my account and then you go to my apps and here you create an app. You give it a name. So they then demo, keep it uh, private keep it sub account uh, and white level and you create the app. You need to add a logo, so whatever you want. So I put one of my photos here, uh, category. This is not important because it's just for you. Uh, tagline, okay, demo, okay. And we save. Then we go to advanced setting and auth. And here we have to select the scope. So if we go to the documentation, we see that these are the scope that we need. So I'm going to copy them and we save. And then here we need the redirect URL, which is in NA10. So for that, here we are going to choose the high level node and create or update a contact, which is absurd. And here we need a credential. So we go to create new credential. And this is the redirect URL that we need to copy. So we go back to our application and we copy this here and we save and we click in client keys, add. And now we have our client ID and our client secret. And we go to NA10 and we copy here the secret and here the ID. And now we need to add the same scopes here. Fortunately, NA10 has just written them here. So I copy them and add them here. I save and connect my account and I hope that everything is working. Okay, login. Now install confirmation. Next. And I want to have it to here, Spalato Dev. Okay, and yes, this is the classic error that I have every time. And because I think something is not saved. So we have to save again and check that. Ah, you see here. I have uh, had my redirect URL, but you have to click to add and then to save. And it's the second time that I make the make mistake. So really take care of that because this is a type of thing that turns you crazy very easily with this type of thing. So I go back here and now connect my account again. And next we choose a sub account and account connected. My God. <laughs> Uh, it seems simple, but uh, to be honest, I have passed some time to uh, have everything working. Okay, so now we are connected to the Go High Level account and we are going to create an email. And you see here we have all the fields that we want to have 
including custom fields. So for example, if we go to custom fields, well, we can create uh, whatever we want here, but we are just going to create the name. So execute the step and we're good. So we go back to our account. And now if I reload our new contact, it's here. So all good. And this is where OOT really shines. Let's say you have 10 clients, each with their own high level account. With private integration, you need 10 different tokens, 10 different credentials in an A10, and 10 different workflows to maintain. With OOT, you create the app once, then for each client, you just authorize the app to access their account. One app, multiple connections. You can even build one master workflow and dynamically switch between client accounts based on the data coming in. That's how you scale. And once you've created the OOT app, you never have to do it again, unless you bang your head against the wall because something's not working, like me this afternoon. And trust me, that happens with OOT sometimes, just like with Google OOT or any other platform. But once it's set up and working, it's done. You just keep authorizing new clients' account as you need them. And here is something most people don't know. You can use OOT credential with HTTP request node. So if the next native Go High Level node doesn't support an action that you need, like a custom API endpoint or a beta feature, you can still use OAuth credential with an HTTP request node. So best of both worlds. So here, if I go to my HTTP request node and here, instead of choosing that, I choose predefined credential type and I level O2 API and I keep everything the same and I put and number two and execute and we're good and now let's see if everything has worked as expected and here it is john doe 2 so he has updated the name because i have kept the same email for example uh, we have some actions a messaging api that is not present here in the native node we see we have action opportunities task calendar actions while here we have conversations and and there is more there is uh, uh, payments there is web hooks so it means that we can do uh, many other things if we use http so which method should you use use private integration if you're only automating your own Go high level accounts, you need something working in five minutes, you're building a one-off automation and you're comfortable with API documentation. And use OAuth if your agency has multiple clients, you are building multiple workflows, you want easiest maintenance and you prefer autocomplete and finally you need to scale. So so honestly, if you're an agency, OAuth is the only way. The upfront setup is worth it. Yes, it might be frustrating for 15 minutes while you're setting it up, but once it's done, it's done. And you thank yourself. <laughs> My recommendation, go for OAuth. The initial pain is temporary. The benefits are permanent. There you go. Two ways to connect N810 to high level. One is fast, one is scalable. Now you know when to use each. And if you want to see more workflow like this, go high level with N8 and builds AI integration, join my community AI Alchemist. First link in the description. We do live builds, share advanced workflows and help each other actually get this stuff working. No hype, just practical automation. And if you're building automation for your agency and it helps figuring out what to automate and how to implement this for your clients, book a free consulting call. Link in the description. And if this video has helped you out, please like, subscribe, comment, and see you in the next one. Bye.